Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our online Sunday service here at Oasis. If you're on holiday and you're tuning in, I hope you're having a great time wherever you are. And if this is your first time joining us, I want to give you a big, warm welcome. My name's Jordan. If you're not quite sure who I am, I'm part of the worship team here. And soon I'll be handing over to Andy, who will be sharing the word with us this morning. Just a few things to highlight, a few dates for your diary. So Sunday the 22nd of August, we're going to be having a summer garden party after our morning service. It's going to be food, there's going to be games, there's going to be music, lots of fun to be had. And if you're thinking about joining us for the first time, that could be a great week to come. So after our morning service at 10.30, everyone's going to go out into the garden, weather permitting, and we just have a great time of fellowship and fun together. A big, 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 big thank you to Tom and Laura for our summer quiz last night that they hosted. Thank you guys for the time that you put into that. We all had a great time and a big congratulations to our winners, Freddie and Georgie, who I reluctantly passed the mantle to of quiz champions. Hope to get that back next year. Before I pass into a time of worship, just gonna pray. So wherever you are, I hope that you, you join me as we, as we pray together. Thank you, Father God, for this time that we have to, to share uh, with you and to, and to learn about you and, and to hear from you. But whatever it is that you wanna say this morning, I pray that you give us ears to hear and open hearts for your word to take root in our lives. God, I thank you for Andy and the, the word and the message that he's prepared. And I pray that he, you will help him by the power of your Holy Spirit to say whatever it is that he wants to say clearly and, um, and with you flowing through every single word. I pray that you bless our time together this morning. Amen. Christ is my reward and all of my devotion and now there's nothing in this world could ever satisfy through every trial my soul will sing no turning back I've been set free and Christ is enough for me and Christ is enough for me and everything I need is in you and everything I Christ my all in all, the joy of my salvation, and this hope will never fail, heaven is our home, through every storm, my soul will sing, Jesus is Turning back, I have decided. 
decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. The cross before to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising all the shame, and he's seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Lord, we worship you and thank you for your sacrifice. And we worship you as you're seated upon the throne right now. In Jesus we enthrone you, we proclaim you are King, standing here in the midst of us, we raise you up with our praise. And as we worship, build a throne. And as we worship, build a throne. And as we worship, build a throne. Come, Lord Jesus, and take your place. And Jesus, we enthrone you. We proclaim you are King. Standing here in the midst of us, we raise you up with our praise.
Good morning, it's great that you've joined us for Oasis Online today. Um, my name's Andrew, if we haven't already met, and it's great that you have joined us today. Uh, we are continuing our staycation series that we've launched over the month of August, and uh, in, this, in this staycation series, we're focusing on finding the presence of God in familiar settings, and you really can't get much more familiar than breakfast, can you? Now, my dad always used to say, uh, breakfast is the most important meal of the day and I can still hear his words ringing in my ear today and I do actually love a bit of breakfast I don't know what you're having this morning maybe you could put in the comments feed what your breakfast preference is but for me it's always been Weetabix Weetabix whether it's got green milk on red milk blue milk it was all white milk isn't it to be honest but uh, I love Weetabix and uh, I don't know if you've seen recently the campaign of um, Weetabix with baked beans on can I just say that is wrong. That is totally out of order. You should never have baked beans on your Weetabix. Um, well, today, where are we going with this? I want to share about breakfast and about how Jesus made provision. And uh, I'm going to read from John chapter 21 and it's verses uh, 1 to 14. And this in itself may be a familiar story to you. But let's read it from verse 1 of uh, chapter 21. Later, Jesus appeared again to the disciples beside the Sea of Galilee. This is how it happened. Several of the disciples were there, Simon, Peter, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. We'll come too, they all said. So they went out in the boat, but they caught nothing all night. At dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach, but the disciples couldn't see who he was. And he called out, fellas, have you caught any fish? That's kind of rubbing salt in the wound, isn't it, right there? <laughs> that they've not caught anything. And Jesus asked them, have you caught any fish? No, they replied. Then he said to them, throw out your net on the right hand side of the boat and you'll get some. So they did. And they couldn't haul in the net because there were so many fish in it. Then the disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his tunic for he had stripped for work, jumped into the water and headed for shore. The others stayed with the boat and pulled the loaded net to the shore for they were only about 100 yards from the shore. When they got there, they found breakfast waiting for them, fish cooking over a charcoal fire and some bread. Breakfast barbecue breakfast on the beach how nice bring some of the fish you've just caught Jesus said so Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net to the shore there were 153 large fish and yet the net hadn't torn now come and have some breakfast Jesus said none of the disciples dared to ask him who are you they knew it was the Lord then Jesus served them the bread and the fish. And this was the third time that Jesus had appeared to his disciples since he had been raised from the dead. Jesus had been raised from the dead. You know, it's amazing how easy it is to revert back to the familiar. And there's a lot of talk these days about uh, going back to normal and what is normal and coming, stepping back into those familiar things of life. And um, we see that's just what happened in this story here, Peter said, I'm going fishing. And all the others said, yeah, we're going too. And it was what Peter and some of the other disciples were familiar with, it was their normal. But we also see that Jesus was there and he provided the food that they were used to eating. He spoke the language that they're familiar with. Uh, he met them in a place that they're familiar with, in, a, in a, doing the work that they were familiar with. This was indeed their familiar setting. But Jesus didn't immediately take them out of that, but revealed himself in their familiar setting. And our day-to-day -day familiar settings, whatever that might be, wherever we might work, however we might spend the days, uh, they aren't a hindrance to the power and the providence of our God. And we've been hearing some great stories of that across our church, that God has been moving in the familiar settings of our lives, whether that's in uh, toddlers or the coffee house, or people chatting to others at the bus stop or walking through the park. Um, and you know what Adrian recently spoke about this he spoke about um, miracles in the marketplace and I believe that we can live with an expectation that there will be the miracles released in our familiar settings there is always room for the miraculous even in the mundane of our lives and I want to encourage us to our, raise our expectations for that I want to encourage us that as we look at this story about a breakfast 
about how Jesus made provision that there's a few things to keep our walk with God fresh in the familiar of life. So the first thing I want to share, uh, the first word is release, release. In verse 6, we see they, they released the net. They, uh, on Jesus' command, they uh, threw out the net. They cast it out. They released it to the right-hand side of the boat as Jesus instructed. You know, you look at this story and you really wouldn't rate Peter as a fisherman, would you? He's, his three years of following Jesus' earthly ministry was in fact bookended by a very similar accounts of him fishing all night, a long night of fishing and not even catching a thing as a professional fisherman, not even a tiddler. And uh, these were professional fishermen doing their thing and it wasn't working. And then a carpenter from Nazareth comes along and starts telling them the best place to catch fish. You know, as a painter, I used to be a painter and decorator, there was nothing worse than another tradesman telling you how to do your job. And Jesus here, who had been brought up to know the trade of carpentry, told these professional fishermen the best place to, to fish. But in that familiar setting of Peter uh, in the boat with the other disciples at sea as a fisherman, he had a choice whether to give up after that long night of catching nothing or to give it a go. And he could just keep fishing the way that he'd always done but miss the fish on the other side of the boat. Uh, and this isn't a story just about uh, releasing the nets but also releasing their way of doing things that they were accustomed to. And I don't want to miss out on what God's got for me in my life because I'm too stubborn in my thinking. Hey, it was a while back and I, we had a regional meeting and I was talking to another pastor who shared with me how he'd recently moved to another church and he felt uh, he needed to do a few things different. He felt God would uh, tell him to do a few things differently. But a member of the church came up to him and said, hey, listen, you can't do that. We've always done it that way. But we've always done it that way. And fortunately, this pastor just knew that it was God saying it and he did it and the church is growing and, and uh, fruitful today which is great you know that that statement but we've always done it that way it's the language of resistance that opposes a heart of releasing and surrendering and I want to encourage us to be a people that surrender each day to release our agenda uh, what we think best what we've grown accustomed to doing in our familiar settings and to listen to that voice of Christ that changes everything Peter and the other disciples listened to that voice from the shoreline telling them to release their nets in a different way that they had done you know, keeping our faith fresh will mean trusting God and it will not always mean leaving behind what's familiar to us, but it will mean surrendering our way of doing things and trusting God and his ways. Second thing I want to share is to recognise, to recognise that he is with us. In verse 7, John leaned over to Peter and he said, it's the Lord, it's the Lord. Rip Mail is a well-known uh, actor, uh, sadly passed away, but many of you will know who I'm talking about. And there was an, a time when uh, me and a couple of friends were in a service station, Kiel service station, and we thought we recognised this guy at a distance. And as he got closer, we knew, we recognised that it was Rip Mail. And in fact, we followed him around the service station then, trying to get his autograph, but that's another story. And in verse four, we see that there's a point in the story where they couldn't see who Jesus was. And then when, Pete, when John told Peter, it kind of clicked with him and he recognised him. And, and in verse seven, we, we see that. It's the Lord that in that declaration. And I love Peter's reaction, he's like, right and he jumped out of the boat and he and he ran through the water and 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 to to greet jesus i love that reaction that excitement that there was an enthusiasm knowing that jesus was with him that it, they recognized who it was and maybe you're struggling to see jesus to to know that he's there can i encourage you to look again just as the disciples did from out at the sea to look in on the shore they looked again and they knew that he was with him. 
I pray that uh, we would have an enthusiasm and an excitement in our faith and in our life as we recognise that he is there with us, to recognise him, to, to see his hand, to see his purposes each day, even in the routine and the familiar of life. He's there with us. I, I, I want to encourage us to recognise Jesus in the familiar, but never to grow too familiar with Jesus that we fail to see who he is. And in Matthew chapter 13, we see a story, an account that uh, in, in Jesus' own town, the place that he grew up, that people were familiar with Jesus, but they failed to recognise who he was. And they put it down to him just being a carpenter's son. Oh, he's just, his, his mum's just Mary. Oh, we know his brothers. Oh, they, they live here too. And sadly, they failed to recognise him, uh, and, but they also rejected him because they failed to recognise him. And the case is, is true today of many as well, that, that people will accept that Jesus was maybe just a historical figure or a good bloke from the past or a wise man with some good teaching, but they reject who he was. But they not only reject who he was and is, but reject the hope that there is in him. He is more than a carpenter's son or a historical figure or a good teacher. He is our provider. He is our Emmanuel. He is Lord of all. He is our hope. He is redeemer. He is saviour. He is risen. He is the son of God. He is victorious. He is peace. He is the mighty one. He is our advocate. He is the author and perfecter of our faith. He is Jesus Christ our Lord. And in verse 12, as they sat down to breakfast, we read that they knew it was the Lord. The disciples knew it was the Lord. The closer the disciples got to Jesus, the more they recognised his grace and his love in their lives. There's a Christian author and his name is Davis Bourne and he, he said this, the closer we come to Jesus, the more we recognise his perfect love, the more we see how far removed we are from this perfection. But he calls to us with that love and forgiveness. He invites us to grow, to become more than we ever could be on our own. Let me encourage us today to come close to him, to recognise him in each day of our familiar settings. Third and final thing I want to share after we've looked at releasing and recognising is to remember. To remember, we read in verse 11 that there were 153 large fish, that they counted the, the fish, they remembered how many fish they were and later made a note of it. Uh, I have a memory about counting fish. I was mackerel fishing a few years back with my eldest son and uh, oh, we, we, we was just blown away. We kept catching the mackerel. In the end, after about half hour fishing, we caught 24 mackerel. And yes, we did count those fish because we were so impressed at our level of fishing. I'd never done mackerel fishing before. And uh, we thought we we're going to go away with a real feast here. But the fishermen in the end shared them out with everyone else who had barely caught anything. So we ended up with about four fish. Why count the fish? Well, you know, there's all sorts of theories about why we know there's 153 fish in this account, why it's recorded. Augustine uh, noted that the number 153 is a triangular number and it's the triangle of 17. Um, um, some scholars say that there are 153 different uh, types of fish in the sea and so it represented the variety of people that would be saved. Well listen, I'm not a scholar or a theologian but I reckon they were just blown away by the number. 153 large fish. They were amazed at the provision of Jesus, of this miracle. They were awestruck by the number and they counted them to remember that this was a day where in the familiar Jesus stepped in and changed everything. You know, I, I, thinking about this uh, a while back, um, me and my wife, uh, we, re we can recall this to, to this day. We received a financial gift uh, at a much needed time and we'd prayed for a breakthrough and then we received this anonymous gift. And I could tell you exactly how much it was given to us because we counted it and we counted it again because we were just uh, amazed at how God had moved in someone else's heart and made provision for us uh, with the exact amount that we needed. Incredible. You know, in this moment, as we think about remembering what must have been going through the disciples' minds, what did they recall at that time? What was it about this time and place that was uh, familiar 
so familiar to them that, that they remembered and they recalled it. And this was the place that the feeding of the 5,000 took place, the miracle there uh, at the Sea of Galilee. Maybe Peter remembered his denial of, of Christ. Maybe Thomas could remember his doubting. Maybe James and John uh, recalled and remembered their attitude that got them the nickname uh, Sons of Thunder. Um, maybe they remembered what they really wanted to forget. But Jesus still called them to himself to remind them of who he was. You know, this must have, as I mentioned earlier, must have reminded Peter of how he started his relationship with Jesus on that day where he'd been fishing all night and didn't catch a thing. And it's recorded in Luke chapter five, the, the, the miraculous catch then. And uh, Jesus saw, as he looked at Peter, I'm sure, all the failings and frustrations, but he called him to follow him. And now in the fears and the failures and the frustrations that Peter had on this occasion Jesus was still calling him to come and follow it was as though Jesus was saying to him look I called you then I'm calling you now I, I was with you then and I'm with you now I provided then and I'm providing now and in verse 13 we see that Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he gave it to the disciples and it must have been a reminder for them in that moment of the many times that they'd eaten together with Jesus but also the last supper that they'd shared together where in fact Jesus said remember me as he broke the bread. Charles Spurgeon um, known as the Prince of Preachers he, he said this uh, when he Jesus fed them when he gave them the bread when he gave them the fish it was a melting season they remembered how he washed their feet but then he was in his state of humiliation and they marveled yet more that now he was risen he would still be among them as one that serves they were done with surprise and gratitude and love as they remembered it was a melting season. I, I love that, that uh, Charles Spurgeon put there, a melting season. And I don't know what memories that you have as we're talking about remembering things today. And um, if any of those has, has prevented you from moving on in your life, maybe you need to hear today from God, uh, like Peter needed to hear that even in the failures of life, even when we've strayed from where we once were, were that he called you then and he's calling you now that he was with you then and is with you now, that he provided then in your life and he is providing now in this moment too. I want to encourage us to remind ourselves of God's goodness and his faithfulness, of his forgiveness, of his grace and his mercy, to remember what he's done in your life. And maybe we, uh, we aren't called to count fish, but I want to encourage us to count the blessings of God, to remember what he's done in our lives. And Jesus spoke into their failure, the fact that they caught no fish, the fact that they had denied him and, and doubted him, the fact that they'd run away when Jesus was arrested, that he spoke into their failure and their familiarity, but he didn't just call them out, he led them through and he drew them close to himself. And finally, as we conclude today, uh, there's this one uh, line that Jesus says in verse 12, and he says, come and have some breakfast with me. Come and have some breakfast with me. You know, what amazes me about this story isn't that just the miraculous catch of fish, <laughs> but that Jesus had made provision with breakfast already, that he provided breakfast. Jesus told them to bring the fish but it already got breakfast ready for them. It already made provision for breakfast before they even brought a single fish to him. And he invited them to step into what he had prepared already. You know, it's important for us to pause in the familiar life with all its successes and failures and frustrations and joys and hurts and, and just to be with him, to spend time with him and to thank him for his provision and, and uh, Maybe like Peter, you have those feelings of failure and being let down and disappointed and frustrated that things hadn't worked out how you thought they might work out. But Jesus invited him to come to breakfast. And we see that from that place, it was a place of restoration where Peter was reinstated and affirmed and the call on his life was, was uh, affirmed as well. And in, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, we read that, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Which God prepared in advance for us to do. 
You know, what is it in our lives that God has already prepared for us that we just need to step into? Like that breakfast that was prepared already for the disciples. What is it that God has prepared for us, maybe as individuals, as a church? What is it? And I want to encourage you, uh, just let's be open. Let's uh, look to keep our faith fresh and alive, alive as we look to him, as we spend time with him, as we hear his voice. Let's have a heart, uh, an attitude that's willing to uh, release our way of doing things and embrace his provision and purposes each day of our lives. Let's be a people who respond to Jesus' wonderful invitation to come and have some breakfast. Maybe today you are struggling to see where Jesus is in your circumstance. Maybe you've not got a relationship with Jesus and you're not trusting him with what's going off in your life. Can I encourage you, as I pray, just to open your heart to him to be willing to release and surrender your way of doing things to trust him maybe to remember on what he's done in, remember what he's done in your life already and to recognize who he is that he is a big awesome great god and he's with us in this moment let's just pray father we just thank you for this amazing story a miraculous story and how you provided and Lord Jesus, I just pray that uh, whoever's watching this this morning or whatever time of day it is, that there be a heart response to, to that invitation to come, to come to you, Jesus. With all our hurts and upsets and frustrations and things not going as we'd hoped they would in life, that we just come and bring it and know your provision, your grace, your mercy, your love. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thanks for joining us today. Do get in touch with us if there's anything that we can help with. God bless. Take care. Greet your faithfulness Oh God my Father Oh God my friend Love it never fades, and so I love you until the end. When shadows fall, you never change. From age to age, you never change. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness through the years, you've always been there. And great is your love for us, your love for us through the years, you've always been there. And great your kindness, God, you are our shell. Our dwelling place, your presence like a fire. Hope for tomorrow, strength for today. When shadows fall, you never change. From age to age, you never change. Great. Is your faithfulness, your faithfulness Through the years you've always been there And great is your love for us Your love for us Through the years you've always been there And great is your faithfulness Faithfulness through the years you've always been there, and great is your love for us, your love for us through the years you've always been there. We 
will stand, we will stand upon your promises. We are strong, we are strong because our hope is in you. We will run, we will run, we will run. We belong, we belong, we belong to you, to you. And great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. Through the years you've always been there. And great is your love for us, your love for us. Through the years you've always been there. And great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness Through the years you've always been there And great is your love for us Your love for us Through the years you've always been there Through the years you've always been there through the years you've always been there, faithful God. Thank you, Andy, for, for that word. Always so good when Andy comes to, to speak to us. I'm sure you'd agree. Just before we, before we go, before we end our time together, if there is anything that you'd like prayer about or if there's anything that you want to speak to Andy or Adrian or anyone at the office about, please feel free to contact uh, the church office. All the details are on the Facebook page or on the church website if you want to get in touch. Just before we go, I've got a quick verse that I'd like to share, a verse of encouragement. It's from 1 Thessalonians 5.15 and it says, Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everybody else. And I absolutely love that, and especially that second part that says, always strive to do what is good for each other and for everybody else, no matter who they are. Whether you're back at work this week, back in the office, adapting to, to normal life again and your colleagues are getting on your nerves, or if you're a parent on six weeks holidays and your patience is being tested, let's strive, as the word says, to do good for each other and everybody else this week. Quick reminder, uh, August, not September, August the 22nd, we have our summer garden party after our Sunday morning service at 10.30 at church. It's a great time to have fun together, meet new people, have some fellowship and have a laugh together. Whatever you do this week, have a great week and we'll speak to you soon.